Welcome. In this video we're going to check out the new feature in Camera Raw and uh, we're going to be playing with uh, this raw image of this flower. I actually have two in here so you can also grab that other one. And what I want to do is I want to first tell you that to see the thumbnail of the Camera Raw image, this .rw2 file, I have to be in Bridge. So I'm in Bridge and I can see the image and when I double click it it'll end up jumping into um, full screen here of camera raw so start with your chapter one uh, and we're gonna mess with camera raw here to show you what some of the neat new features are inside this awesome awesome new version alright so let's get started first thing I want you to do is start with this first basic panel here now it's gonna show you what it's like as shot you can immediately trust just try an auto on it to get it corrected okay you can also just put it back to a uh, shot now when you click auto what it's going to do is it's going to do its best to create values for all these different settings based on what you have but remember you can also change things on your own for example you can do some uh, presets like daylight right you can also choose cloudy day you'll warm it up shade let's see what tungsten does now tungsten makes it really blue well think about it why would it do that well that's because it, tungsten would be a uh, incandescent light inside your house so if you have a raw image inside your house you can choose tungsten and it'll cool it back down you can also do fluorescent like you took it inside um, one of these industrial lit lit places with a flash and then there's custom now if you leave it as shot and then you start adjusting things, it'll automatically switch it to custom. See, I just changed something so it put it to custom. And while you're doing this, you're going to see the histogram values here of each of the different colors. Put it, turn it back to as shot. Now basically the way you're going to do this if you're going to hit manually is uh, I tend to start with auto and see what uh, Photoshop or Camera Raw can do first. And if I don't like that, I go back to the default sometimes I'll hit auto and I might not think it's perfect but I think it's a good start well at that point I might start walking my way down these values uh, trying to check out what exposure does obviously it's going to make it a little brighter okay uh, you can adjust adjust the contrast directly see I can make it ooh, really dark okay uh, brighten up the highlights darken the highlights you see how the sky in the back is being treated when I do that uh, shadows same deal you can adjust those individually you notice that these dials are different than what they've been in previous version of, of camera raw and you have your whites just making your whites brighter and your blacks lighter or darker so these are all ways to adjust your exposure and the white balance directly I'm gonna go ahead and click back to auto you can also have this neat new feature called clarity clarity basically just brings back the focus uh, makes it in detail almost okay and so blurry kind of soft focus more focused alright then you also have your um, vibrance uh, vibrance obviously gonna make it richer or a little grayer now these are just the entire picture okay and I may want to mess with those I may not but in my case I'm just gonna move on to the next thing because I think that the auto setting for this did a pretty darn good job on this flower I was lucky it was a good flower the art was already there if you move over to your tone curve you can have similar adjustments for adjusting the the tone of the image you can move the entire thing at once uh, you see how this is doing the highlights and you see how it's only adjusting from here up okay and this is once again going to adjust the entire picture. Okay, you can adjust the lights, and you see how you get a, a gentler curve of adjustment. All right, uh, you can adjust where those points change. Let's move these over. You'll see how it's less. I'm going to reset those back. And basically, what your goal is here, you can adjust this to come come up with. Uh, some good lights and darks I tend to not spend as much time on the tone curve as I do my other uh, settings here let's go to the next one called detail and sharpening I will 
increase the sharpness. Now, if we take a look, zooming in on this, this is pretty much in focus, but I'm going to try and sharpen it up even more. So I'm going to increase my detail, my radius, my amount. And you can see that there is a pretty big difference just in moving those over. Now, as you do this, you might notice that noise starts occurring inside the image. You can always increase these really high. You see how that Wow, there I'm now I'm really you can see the noise. That's what I really wanted to do is show you the noise. Well, if you start getting noise like this, you can then turn your noise reduction up and it's gonna make that go away. This is a way to artificially create sharpness in an otherwise blurry image. Now I wouldn't recommend putting these things up all the way unless you're going for some type of HDR effect. I'm just gonna put mine back down and put my noise reduction back down a little bit. Alright, I think I like that. Now the next thing you can go to is your uh, grayscale here. You can actually adjust colors individually to make this picture grayscale. Uh, it's it's kind of neat. Like You have all these different settings for the different colors and the more you increase them, the more vibrant or the more dull they're going to become. So let's take this red up and you can see how the reds are getting brighter. Um, it's honestly to the point of a problem over there. You can uh, make it to where all the greens, for example, are going to gray. And when I pull those all down, you can see how we're losing a lot of the color in the image. So that's a quick way to um, almost like create a different version of the picture. So you can adjust your uh, image pretty quickly. You can also tell it to do a grayscale adjustment and then it's going to do like its automatic best mix for this particular image which in this case it looks like an S-curve to create a good looking grayscale so if you ever want to make grayscale photography this is what you want to hit. I'm going to undo that and put it back to default. Alright now I'm going to uh, switch over to the split toning here so you can adjust the highlights and the shadows independently so you can make shadows become more saturated or less if you want so I can saturate shadows saturate highlights so you can do it in between you can shift that alright so the split tonings kind of an interesting interesting set now what I want to do is return back to my basic one and I'm gonna click on the adjustment brush and if I go to the adjustment brush I want you to see how I can now adjust parts of this image individually. I'm going to zoom out so you can see a little more. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to zero out all my settings here. Now, if I zero out all my settings, except for the size of my brush here, I'm going to make it be relatively big, maybe, maybe about 10. And I'm going to make it be a good feather here. All right, so somewhere around there. Uh, this is for the size of my effect, my brush here as I'm working. Now, when you have this set up, the first thing you're going to do with the adjustment brush is to create a new adjustment. Now, in my case, I'm going to create an adjustment on some green aspect here. So I'm going to click down here in this green. And when I do, it creates this pin. I just created a new pin. So now it's adding to that area of adjustment. Now, when I say adjustment, what do you change? Well, I haven't changed anything yet. I, all these are zeros. However, to make it obvious what we're going to change, is I'm going to make it all black and white. So I'm going to take my saturation here and just throw it over to black and white. Now, in the add mode with my brush, notice that as I'm brushing, it doesn't create a pin this time. Instead, it adds to the adjustment of negative 100 saturation. So what I'm going to do here is paint away the green just by brushing around. Now, it's important to have something called auto mask on as you do this because what this is going to do is make it to where when I get up near the flower here I don't accidentally turn it black and white. Now I'm going to keep it off for just a, se a second here as I do kind of the periphery just kind of brushing around and I'm not going to get too close. I'm not going to accidentally get my ring of adjustment in my brush too close to my flower. So I'm just painting around you see how I'm quickly turning this into a black and white image. I'm going to pull it up Let's see. All right. And so I got a lot of it done just in a few moments like that. But I don't want to get too close because I don't want to mess it up. Okay, great. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on that thing called Auto Mask. And what that's going to do is that's going to keep it from adjusting that purple. So I'm going to get closer to it. And as long as I don't put my crosshairs on the purple, it's going to leave it. So even though my, my brush technically is touching it, it's not all the way. So I can go inside here and just, just don't let that crosshair touch it. Just don't let your crosshair touch the edge of the flower. So I'm going to get really close. So you can go in between little sections and still colorize, or I'm sorry, desaturate the areas you want and not have any problems. Now it's having trouble with this pink up here. That's because my pen is associated with green because that's where I dropped it. And there you go. All right. So now how do you get some of these extra things going? Well, you might have to zoom in. Okay. And you'll use your space bar to move around. Space bar or the bottom button on your tablet will allow you to move around your screen. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show the mask. And you can see how, how the mask is being adjusted. You see over here it's a little bit off. So I might have to do some erasing of my adjustment in that area. But I'm going to turn off auto mask and see if I can erase and get right up to the edge of that. Keep that all in a nice vibrant color as well as over here. Just try and be accurate as you are painting. And then I'm going to click back into add mode and I'm going to shrink my brush really tiny and make it to where I can get in here nice and clean without touching. So like I said, your goal is to not touch up into the edge. Yeah, it's much easier to do this with a pen and tablet than it is with a mouse. Okay, I'm just going to get right up on the edge here. It gets a little confusing about what's going on up here, so I'm going to shrink this down even further. Make it really tiny. You can see how that mask is coming into play. And I know it looks like I'm painting on top of it, but that's because my mask is showing right now. And I'm going to get just some of these little, little spots here and there. Yep, and up here, that yellow, yellow spot always gives me trouble. All right. All right, then down here again, around the edge. It's a little foggy there, so it should look a little foggy. All right. And let's see how let's see how we did when I turn off show mask. All right, so there might be a couple other spots I need to go into, carefully adjust out. All right, you can also do this with another pin. You can add another pin to highlight this out. So if you wanted to click on new, it would create a new pin for that color. Now, I don't want to do that right now. Um, I'm going to leave my pin alone. But when you see it, you see that you have this pin that is adjusting it. Now, I can also tell it to adjust, for example, the sharpness in that region. So now that I've got it kind of masked off, just because I changed my saturation doesn't mean that's what I need to keep. I can have my saturation kind of come back. Uh, I have to click on that pin, sorry. Um, Let's click back on that pin. All right, so I can adjust that saturation back up, and you see how I'm getting some of that back, or I can turn the saturation through the roof. I can also um, make it to where the saturation is affected, but then maybe also the, how about the sharpness? Okay, so we'll make the sharpness get blurrier in that area, right? So you see how the sharpness is adjusting, or I can make it sharper less sharp. So you see how I'm blurring that area of the image. Um, you can adjust things. You can even add in a, a color on top of it. So maybe I want to make it warmer like a sepia. I can click in here and get an actual sepia or maybe something a little oranger. There we go. To come through on that area. So if I desaturate it, add the color, you can see how I'm, I'm getting a classic or look for that area. Now the neat thing about Camera Raw is that all these things are uh, available to you at any time. You can always go back and adjust them. You can go back and change the setting to do something completely different and you've never heard the original image. If I click open image, it's going to open it in Photoshop. If I click save image, it's going to allow me to save it as a uh, DNG file, a digital negative. And what I might call this is 
let's see I'm gonna call it the document name but then I'm gonna call it how about um, grayscale alright so it kinda of brings in a grayscale in there and then when I click save it'll save that DNG for me and it can be opened on uh, you know any other computer because it's a DNG now note about saving image into a DNG the compatibility if you want to make it compatible with older versions you need to choose an earlier version in camera raw obviously an older version is more compatible than a newer version because the more versions will open up version 2.4 and later so when you do 7.1 you gotta think about it somebody has to have CS6 to actually open up that file so maybe I'll save it as 6.6 instead and click save and so now it's gonna save a different copy and then I'm gonna go ahead and open it up in Photoshop So now here's my image in Photoshop and it comes in as a regular background layer and I can go back and do further adjustments if I need to. So what's the benefit here? The best thing to do is to shoot in camera raw so that you can make more adjustments to it. Then that allows you to have a higher quality image and have more control over your work while you're working on it in Photoshop.